What's up everybody? Kevin here and I decided to do a quick overview of how I work the domination station for football, especially on the short state slate since we're all working a bunch of short slates this weekend. There's a three game, a two game, a one game, a four game. It's crazy. So I wanted to give you guys a little overview of how I work this and I've started messing around with it a little bit. Right now I'm doing FanDuel for the divisional round only. <clears throat> I want to give you guys an idea of how to do this because I think there's always been a little bit of confusion. So, or, or uh, you know, a lot of new people too, not quite sure what to do. So here we go. We have our two games, all of this stuff, positions, blah, blah, blah. You've all seen all of this. I don't mess with any of these settings outside of setting the number of lineups. Here's where we get started. That optimal tournament mode, I use tournament mode. Sometimes in, in a two-game slate, it's difficult. Tournament mode has, it's finicky with all of the different stacks we're going to use. So you can use optimal mode as well. It's not that big of a deal uh, on a short slate. Um, set it by fantasy points, number of uniques per lineup. I usually roll with two on a shorter slate. You can try three or one, depending. And then this is the number of players against your defense, and I set it at two for now. Two against the defense is enough. You can, you, you can go to three. Um, in a normal slate of a lot of games, I use zero, but obviously this is a short slate and you have to uh, attack your defense. All right, so this is the part I want to show everybody, most important. When I'm doing these shorter slates, I'm first trying to figure out uh, everything is stack. It's all about correlation and even sometimes game stacks, but I'm not going to get there because you'll automatically, with just two games, you're going to have game stacks kind of anyway. So, but uh, with different, depending on different scenarios, a lot of times I'll specifically force game stacks like, Brady with no less than one of his pass catchers, and then I'll add another one, Brady with no less than one of, and then I'll use all of the pass catchers, or like a Derrick Henry or something like that from the opposing team. I'm not doing that today, but you have the ability to do that. When you're stacking a QB, you don't have to just stack him with his own players, but you can set up a second one here. Stack QB, Tom Brady with no less than one player of Walker, Davis, Matthews, Decker, right? So you can set up a game stack, or or, or you can even add in Derrick Henry in that one, as if to say, hey, if Derrick Henry's doing well, then Brady's probably got to keep up, right? So we set it up that way. Okay, now, here are our players, and oh, notice who's locked. That's right. 100% all in for me. Live or die with Deion Lewis. Anyway, um, you go position by position and you can kind of set. Now, what, what I first do is I like to just run it and see what, see how it comes together, right? So how does it, the key is before you ever start messing around with exposures, you start to look, all right, how's it naturally falling? All right, well, I'm getting about 52%. Brady, that's about what I want. Hey, the, you know, and I'm kind of looking at these numbers, and this might be kind of where I want it to be anyway. Maybe I want a little more foals. You know, I can, I can make it, I can manipulate the tool in a number of different ways. But, you know, if I want a little more foals, a little less of this one, th those are adjustments we can make. So I look at that. But right now, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable, actually, with these percentages. I might still shift it. This isn't my official um, setup. I've already set it. All right, so check this out. RB. I've already set Henry to 50%. Knowing I want 100% Lewis and, and this big Fanduel, I'm going to need diversification. So I want exposure to the rest of some of the rest of these guys. Now, we know Burkhead's not playing. Take him out of your player pool. I don't use this level of player on Fanduel. I don't mind having a share or two of James White just in case he's the nuts play. That's what you kind of eat one share of Garrett Blunt out of 150 lineups, a couple shares of Coleman, and then you're going to have probably a focus on these three guys mainly today. So let's see how that fell. Yeah, Ajayi, Freeman. So I might say, yeah, these two are kind of even. Maybe I'll do 13.2. I, you know, I think Ajayi's probably got a better outlook than Freeman, but I might do something along the lines of, not to use a Jai. All right, so let's check out. I got a cool stack idea here. All right, check this out. Team stacking options. Defense. Stack. Eagles. With no, with exactly zero of Freeman. 
right? So basically, if I'm using the Eagles defense, I don't want Devontae Freeman as my running back. And then we're going to stack Falcons D with no less than, with exactly zero of Ajayi. Basically telling it, again, if I think if the Falcons D is doing well, Ajayi, probably not. Now, it's not 100%, but that's a good little correlation play that I think you can, you can, um, ro or I'm, I think I'm going to roll with just because, you know, again, we want to have, in, uh, in unique things. We want to sort of set ourselves aside. And we want to build for correlation in a perfect world. Now, again, in these very, very short slates, sometimes correlation is not even that important because like random shit happens. So, you know, th do with that what you will. So now you see a pretty reasonably even mix of these secondaries. So assuming I'm right and Deion Lewis is in the nuts. And that's, that's basically how I'm approaching this slate. Uh, assuming I'm right, then I want to, you know, spread out my exposure to, to the rest of these guys because I'm not sure between, I think it's going to be Henry as the best alternative play, but what if it's not? So you want a little exposure to all these other guys, right? Now we've got the wide receiver position. So we got to do a little bit of manipulation. I like, look at the percentages here, right? And, and I'm seeing names that I don't want that much of. Like I'm going to want more Chris Hogan. So I'm going to set that to 8.5. Now we can do this. I'm going to want a little more Alshon Jeffrey. I'm going to set him a little higher, 9.2. This is how, this is how I manipulate these things. Uh, Taiwan Taylor's not a guy I'm going to use. Get him out of there. I don't like Corey Smith outside of like one or two shares. So I get him down. Brandon Cooks, I'd like a little more of him. Um, you know, so I'm going to, I'm going to work these numbers a little bit here. Just to try to manipulate how this comes together. So let's let's run it again. Uh, let's check out the tight end position, 75% Gronk. I can do a little bit less Gronk. I love Gronk, don't get me wrong. Let's see if I uh, change 15.35, what happens? I like a little more Ertz and a little more Walker. It's possible, you know, the way I approach this is, listen, is it likely that Gronk is in the nuts? Absolutely, but what are the chances that these other guys show up in the nuts? And if I don't have them and I'm doing 150 lineups, I don't win, so I've gotta have some level of exposure to everybody who could possibly be in the nuts. It's about figuring out the percentages. Okay, same here. Gostowski, I like 47%. That's fine. But maybe I want a little bit more there. I don't love suck up. I don't love like a big underdog um, on the road, even though you never know. But let's go 10 with him. And then I'll raise up Matt Bryan a little bit to 7.55. Five, let's say. All right. So we'll adjust these just a little bit. And notice I'm doing this without, and here's another one, a little too much Atlanta, 6.4. I want a little more even distribution of these defenses. And I don't want any Tennessee Titans, so I'm going to uncheck them. All right. Let's run it again. Let's see how much time I have left. All right. We're eight minutes in, so we got a couple minutes left of this video. I'm going to run it again. Optimize. This is how I do it over and over and over again. Watch the exposures. First, Try to adjust them by setting, by ch changing the actual projections. And only after a while, if I'm not getting what I want, do I start to mess around with the exposure settings. So I'm still seeing more Aguilar than maybe. I love Aguilar this week, by the way. Don't get me wrong. I think he's one of the best cheap wide receivers uh, plays, but... I mean, I don't know which one of these guys is going to catch the touchdown, and I'm not sure I want to risk 150 lineups on Nelson Aguilar. So I'm going to go 8.7. Again, knowing that some of these guys are going to be duds, you know it going in. There's just nothing you can do. I'm going to go 9 here, lower him. I just want to lower everyone. It's like I hate them all. Uh, 6.7. This is a really weird week for, for wide receivers. Numbers lock 7. You know, it, it is. It's just a weird week for wide receivers. And it's really tough to know which one of these guys is going to completely dud out. Like, I don't want just 9.2 on Jeffrey. I don't love Jeffrey this week. I've told you you guys that. But in, in a, in a uh, situation like this with 150 lineups, you know, you got to get some exposure here. So let's, let's do this again. Maybe I'll even enter it in a contest. Let's see if I can get all the way to the point where I can throw this in a quarter contest for you guys so you see how that's done. All right, let me see if I can get to FanDuel.
What is cheap con? I don't even think those things show on my screen. Okay, here we go. Is this it? Saturday only. Yeah, all right, cool. We're going to enter these into a real contest today, guys. That's fun. All right, so I'm going to actually use this distribution that I'm doing right now. We're going to throw that in that 25 cent contest, see if we can win it. Uh, Mariota, Foles. Okay. Yeah, this is about, this is about where I want to be. I, I kind of, I, I kind of have this feeling about Foles, but, um, all right. So this is still not comfortable. I'm going to 6.1. I think I like Philly defense the best. This is still way too high. So let me run it one more time. Having made that adjustment, six. Let's go all the way down to six. Again, I'm just, I, I, I do my best to manipulate the projection rather than having to use the max exposure settings, but I will use them if I need to. So here's my defenses. This is about right. Yeah. Yeah. Even mix. Okay, that's better. Gostowski coming down a bit. Yeah, that's a little bit better. I don't love Ryan Suckup, but you never know with these things. And he's going to be low-owned. You've got to think about game theory situations. I think Matt Bryant might be the best. So I think I want to get a little more. You know, he's got a good shot of being in the nuts because um, Philly's kind of, the Eagles kind of suck. But, but you know, it's going to be this low-scoring kicking type game. So uh, Gostowski's always in the mix, and so is going to be him. All right, 15. Let's go a little bit less. Gronk compared to these other guys. I'm still getting too much Aguilar uh, and too much Sanu. So we're going to go 8.4. I'm going to go 8.7. I'm going to go 14.7. I, I I don't want that much Julio either because I think he is... How much time I got left here? 12 minutes. Um, 6.4. I think he is going to be very high owned. So, you know, if he doesn't come through, he's going to burn you. But, I mean, Julio Jones is, how come no matter how much I lower Nelson Aguilar, he keeps showing up? All right, let me lower him some more. There, it's, it's, it's working a little bit better here. 8.2, Mohamed Sanu, 8.0, Corey Davis, 6.1, So we need a little more Hogan in there, too going on with that so you got to watch these exposures it's not going to automatically figure it's itself out for you you've got to work these and I run it again and again and again that's how we do it over and over until you figure out what what you like all right well, this will take me a lot of times longer all right I'm not going to put it in the contest because I actually still want to mess around with these numbers a little bit but You have to keep an eye on each one of these individually to make sure you're not getting too much of any one player, too little of any one player before you actually commit. Um, so it's not an automatic process. I usually spend hours doing this stuff, many, many hours of messing around back and forth. So it's not some easy, quick fix. Um, anyway, you know what? Let's throw these in the quarter contest. I'm still going to mess around with this before I put this in a serious contest, but I want to take you all the way through the process. So select lineups all Download 150 lineups. Boom. Okay, let's see. Hopefully it's not too bad. I don't mind. You know, let's see what ends up happening here with this weird, weird. Let me do it one more time. This is just way too much. Not enough. Chris Hogan. Let's go to 8.9. Let's see if I can get one in. Decker. That's too much Decker. Sanu. Okay, let's try running this one last time. And then I'm going to actually put it in the contest for you, 1430. So we got a couple seconds left, and I'll give you the idea of show you how to do put this in a contest. Here we go. Nope, not going to make it to the contest. But nonetheless, you would download the the uh, the lineups using this function. Select all, download, and then on your FanDuel screen it says. Upload entries from CSV. 